Hello, we're going to start with this box glove, which we didn't plant ourselves, ourselves, which just arrived, and it's a white one. And the, the lower ones are already going to seed, but there's still lots more on the top. We didn't, this just arrived. Now, we normally bark the, be the beds, and when if you bark the beds, you don't get anything like, like that, because bark stops the likes of fox gloves germinating. But we didn't bark, we got a bit lazy, and this is the result of our laziness. Now, when it, got, when it gets nearly finished, if you were to cut here, you get subsidiary ones. You get a secondary flowering. Okay, that's the fox glove. The next one is Nautia, which we didn't plant either. Well, we originally planted a Nautia, and it's sort of everywhere now. Interesting, if it gets too lanky, you can remove a bit of the weight. And that's the decorative seed head. But if you remove a lot of them, if, if it stop it going like that, if it's anyway uh, going towards the sun. There are dwarfer forms, but when it uh, self seeds, it goes back to the na uh, natural, which it tends to be taller. And um, they're lovely, we have them there. Now, this plant here, that is a hydrangea aspera, which I had in the garden center, and it got badly damaged by the frost. And I didn't know what to do, so I just stuck it in a big pot, and put it around the back. And then I brought it out here, and I was going to put it over there. And somebody, my wife said, that it would be too close to the Japanese maple, and she was right. The brown and the reddy brown didn't really, one didn't help the other. So, along here, we lots of plants with small leaves. So, we had this fuchsia in there, so I took the fuchsia out just a few days ago, cut it back, put it in the north facing no sun to let it recover and it's coming back strongly it's called fuchsia delta sara and we put that somewhere else so it's worked out really well and i've noticed i've noticed about this is a hydrangea aspirate and they're they're the, the long velvety leaf hydrangeas i've noticed that it is still going to flower there's one flower here one flower bud here uh, it's and there's another one here. It's called uh, something chocolatey. Cap we, we put it up cappuccino or chocolate mocha or something like that. Now in a normal situation, if it hadn't got damaged, the leaves would be that size. So it's a really really good plant to have. And going further on, <coughs> we have geranium and Thompson, which is gone, which is meant to be more compact than on Falkard. It's gone totally mad. It's ran right into the fuchsia, Mrs. Popple. Now I don't know what to do. Should I? remove it to give the Mrs. Mrs. Popple a bit more room or should I just let them fight it out? So I can't make my mind about what to do so I'm just leaving it for the time being. Now we we'll go across here. We do a bit of planting up. And this is my new planting method. It's called a higgly piggly method. You just fire a lot of stuff in and see what happens. I'm, I'm particularly gone this year on uh, on the, the tubers rooted uh, begonies, particularly the the, the, the the richer amber shades, the, the the more vibrant shades. But I'm not, as in the past, when I'm trying to match stuff up, I'm not doing that now. I'm just lashing everything in and seeing what happens. And there's two calibre hose, which is like a dwarf form, a smaller form of the hanging petunia, and it's becoming more and more popular. We have, this is in the third year, <coughs> this is hot lips, salvi hot lips. And when they get popped down, they, they need a lot of water. You just cannot give them enough water. We have uh, this very rich dahlia, I think it's Bishop of York, and that's its second year. That was put in the shed for the winter and it came through the worst. It was looking very unhealthy, looking very worse for wear up until about early May or mid-May. And then suddenly it just took off, put a bit of feed on it and that's it. Great plant. Probably next year I want to lift it and split it or do something or do something with it anyway. It's probably two years you're looking to one pot, just about the flower. And what's good about this day, it's a lovely, a lovely pale flower against the dark foliage. And here's another, another one here, another day, I've forgotten what it is. That's a new one I potted up. And once again, Higgly Piggly. This is a very nice plant here. It's, um, it's used for summer, in summer baskets. It's a, it's a hanger, it's called the Chondra. It's actually related to bindweed and uh, uh, morning glory and all that. But it's very good, silver is very good against the rich red. 
and finish off the front. I planted some campanulas in here, or not campanula muralis, the well, mural means wall. And what we did is we, get out of the way you, what we did is we, they will actually grow in gravel, they will grow in limestone mortar, in limestone rubble, they will, in their native habitat, they grow in scree beds where there's virtually no organic soil. So what we did is dug the hole, went down a good bit, put, a, put them in, put a bit of extra compass around them to give them a start, and then they're on their own. And you can see the, the top, the top uh, dressing is of a lighter, a lighter stone, but underneath is a very, we have the, the normal limestone. Now by right, we should have put a membrane down or else put a, a, a layer of dust this uh, rock dust th this color but we never bought it so when i was digging these out i dug up a load of of the black stuff and all we can do there is spend 10 minutes taking out the black bits by hand but hopefully that will work out south facing um it should be good we don't know and look just to finish off the front here's another volunteer a well a much welcome volunteer that's the more common color of the foxglove oh look Bumblebee inside. Uh -huh. We go into the front to do a few bits. We had a very tall cypress tree here when it was put in. It was a nice smallish tree. There's one called uh, uh, Cupressus Wilma, a form of the, the Californian Monterey cypress. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So eventually we took it out. We just cut it down. There's the stump. And it will just die away naturally. Now, actually, what's going to be good about that is that as it dies away, while it was quite, because it was so big, it would have got its roots in everywhere. Now, they're going to die away and they're going to form, they're going to make pathways for this lovely rose to find its way. I think that's a particularly elegant rose. It's called Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, we put, they were already there, they were struggling. With, uh, with very, they were getting mildew fairly early on in the season because they weren't getting enough water. They're, they're geraniums, uh, striatum, sanguinium striatum. But they will be much better now. And then we stuck in here, we stuck a salvia called Nachtlinder. Now we have a tall beech tree, an upright beech tree. We are not, that would keep going. That would grow to 70 feet. We are not gonna let it grow any taller. In the winter time, I'm gonna strip it right back right in almost to a pole, and off it'll go again. Now, our gravel garden, I went a bit mad this year. It was very stripped back and, and very sort of uh, designery, and I just decided to give it more color and just go a bit mad, and my new higgly-piggly way garden, just lash everything in. Um, and I'll just point out a few plants. It's a new rose, it's called Simply Peach. It's a hardness rose, first time I've had it. I'm really, I love it. I think it's amazing. I, I toned it down with some cat mint called Persian Blue. And then up, up again I went with a, a in your face red of Salvia Royal Bumble. This was always here. And well, this was here since we moved in. This came from uh, my wife's family. It was, it's been in the family a long time. And this is a plant, these iron lilies, they occasionally are sold in garden centres, but most people get them from their family. It's one of these plants that can move around, and it's sort of nice to have something a memento. Uh, let's see what else we put. Cream, hydrangea limelight. This very, very in-your-face GM, uh, totally tangerine. And beside it, I have this rose. Now it, it's I don't know what it is. I went to this old nursery and. A uh, chap grow, grows roses from cuttings and he had a lot of unusual roses and they weren't even named. So I particularly, I like that one. Now, let's have a look at it. Nip this one out. There's one, two, three new shoots with more, loads more buds. So it's gonna grow maybe this size. I think it's gonna be quite good here. We need to do a little bit of work on the bamboo. We'll do that later on. We, we don't want the bamboo to be too thick. We want it to be loose and sort of light. 
In the, in the middle we have a millennia called transparent. It's quite a tall one, but it's it's transparent. You can sort of see through it. It's just to give a lightness and a movement in the middle. Uh, we have an Alastromeria, which is called it's called squirt, flirt, flirt. Forgot the name of that. We had them for sale. They didn't really sell. Fell apart in the middle. It's a it's a companion of some sort. I'll put the name up. I'm hoping it will uh, reflower. What I will do in about two weeks' time, I will chop, 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 and I hope I hope it'll come in, start off in the centre again, and reflower. Fuchsia, army nurse, a few pink persicarias, nice pink persicaria, and if very much dark in your face, it still be. So there's a lot of mix and match. We already had this here, the uh, the twisted hazel, and we had that. We had that nice hydrangea. Don't even know what name it is. It's a nice, uh, sort of nice foliage as well. So I think this is going to be. Oh, we have this as well. This is for winter colour. This is the north facing part. This is a uh, brunera. Uh, sorry for spring colour. Lovely blue flowers, but then during the summer, it has a silver foliage. And of course, behind, we have the very dependable geranium rosan in semi-shade, and that will flower for, what are we now? Today is actually the longest day of the year. It's the day you can light your bonfires and dance around them, it's legal. Which is great, because it, it makes us, brings us back to our ancestors, who had it harder than us, never forget. So, uh, this is my, gravel garden and it means I don't have to mow the lawn and it's it's just sort of I really like it I really like this garden and I just always come out in the evening and I just do a little bit pottering around here and just half an hour just to potter it around and just get lost in the garden is lovely